here's a 1965 Admiral solid state portable record player at first glance you might think this was a stereo unit but it's actually not it's a it's a monaural unit with the left and right speakers wired in parallel you've actually seen this record player in another video we in another video we replaced the pickup cartridge and recap the amplifier and I'm just now getting back to this we want to fix the mechanical problems with the record changer and clean it up a little bit and I think all it really needs is some minor cleaning and lubrication and it should be good to go okay we have the platter removed and I've removed the bearing assembly and washers from the turntable spindle this is a little bit different changer than what we're what we're used to working on is in this is not a BSR or a VM this is actually an Admiral made record changer and although all this moves pretty freely we're going to take it apart and clean it anyway okay we have everything for the most part cleaned and lubricated and the mechanical portion seems to be working okay except for a couple of minor adjustments however here's the next problem we ran into this originally used a 3 volt crystal cartridge driving a 2 transistor amplifier since the amplifier in this set is a line driven amplifier that means it runs directly off of the AC power line with no step down transformer the uh, output stage runs off of around 100 volts and they have a dropping resistor for the preamp stage but anyway enough of that this originally had a 3 volt cartridge in it that was dead well really without thinking I ordered a new old stock 3 volt cartridge and even though this has plenty of output it's not very stereo compliant it'll play a lot of the older records but some of the later records from the 70's such as the disco records like this Andrea True Connection album it jumps and skips all over the place well they don't make 3 volt cartridges anymore the the best we can come up with is about a half a volt so I had one of these cartridges on hand and I temporarily installed it and, and surprisingly it it does fairly well it doesn't have the volume that the old cartridge had but it's still got enough volume to for decent listening and since this is a stereo cartridge we have to wire the left and right channels together and you can see I've already made jumpers using heat shrink tubing and pieces of hookup wire now I just hope we can connect it all up and it'll fit in the head shell now this cartridge was originally mounted with a single screw here in the top of the head shell ideally the bracket for this type of cartridge is designed for two screws spaced a half inch apart but the bracket does have a center screw in the a center hole in the bracket so you can mount it this way which I've done okay more cheap garbage from China in terms of this cartridge when I attempted to slide on the cartridge connector pins the terminals on the cartridge just started sliding up into the body of the cartridge so if I hadn't already ruined the cartridge I'm going to attempt to super glue these terminals in place so I can slide the cartridge connectors up onto them without them sliding up into the body of the cartridge I swear you can't win for losing nowadays the old cartridges are usually bad from uh, sitting up for 30 or 40 years and the newer cartridges you get are just cheap Chinese garbage it's not worth bringing home so what do you do okay we now have the super glue in place and whenever that dries then maybe we can connect the cartridge without the, th without the terminal sliding up into the cartridge body and with any luck the cartridge will still work I mean you'd think with the popularity of records being greater than they've been in probably 20 years that these cartridge manufacturers would strive to turn out a better product but I guess not you know they don't care I guess they figure people won't notice or either they want people to think vinyl is so crappy that they'll go back to digital formats and they'll just uh, 
they're just abandoned vinyl again. And normally I would use a P226 style cartridge. It has the flip under LP and 78 stylus. But I don't have one of those on hand and I'm trying to use what I have on hand which is one of these single tipped LP cartridges. I doubt there, there will be many 78s played on this unit anyway so it really doesn't matter. However, if this cartridge turns sour then I might have no choice but to order one of the P226 cartridges and hope it doesn't fall apart on us. Okay, this is a Fansteel P188D. thought we'd get a good look at the label. Packaged in USA. But if we move over a little bit, made in China. So, yep, yeah, you see I wasn't lying to you. Fansteel Corporation, an LKG Industries company. Same cartridge used in the Crosleys and numerous other all-in-one systems made between the mid-80s to the present day. And this new old stock cartridge that was originally in this changer will most likely be installed in a, in a one tube Wonder 78 RPM record player that I have. And I'll probably just install a 78 needle on the LP side so when one stylus wears, you can flip it over and still have another one to fall back on. This may not be very compliant for LP playback, but it should do just fine for 78s. Okay, our glue has set and the terminals appear to be secure. But before we install this in the record changer, I'm going to connect each channel of the cartridge to my realistic test amplifier and make sure this cartridge is still functioning. Well, fortunately we're still outputting a signal on both channels so now we can install this and hope for the best. Okay, there it is. Let's just hope it works now. Okay, there you go. Now there are two other things we need to do. We need to adjust the tone arm set down position because the tone arm is dropping too far into the record and we need to adjust the tracking pressure. Even though this is playing okay, it's tracking at about 2.8 grams and these cartridges do better in the 4 to 5 gram range so we want to adjust that. Actually too light of tracking pressure can destroy a record quicker than too much tracking pressure. Well, they called me from the flea market today and said they had a had an old fan and an old Zenith shortwave radio they wanted me to look at, so I went by there and the fan they wanted me to look at was some 40s, possibly early 50s off-brand rust bucket that they wanted 50 bucks for. No, I don't think so. And the other thing was a was a Zenith Transoceanic radio from probably the mid to late 40s. I forget the model number, but I have one just like it, and they wanted 125 for that. So I said no thanks on that, too, especially since I've already got one like it. But as I was walking around, I spotted this little bugger. It's a Sterling fan. It's not an oscillating fan, just a single-speed fan. It had 15 bucks on it, and I said, well, that might be a good deal. And then I noticed how loose the cage was, and the blades are out of balance. And I said, well, I'll, I'll give it a shot. 15 bucks, I can straighten that out, and the finish is in good shape. However, when I got home and took the cover off of it, I realized I should have left it there. Not only did somebody cut the power cord off, as well as the wires going to the switch, they even went so far as to cut out the windings out of the motor. And I don't detect any odor like where a winding burned up, so I think this was probably done by a copper scrapper. All for the sake of getting two cents worth of copper out of something, and obviously the type of person that would do this doesn't give a flying flip about our history. They're probably the kind of person that 
goes around buying a new iPhone every time the newest version comes out. So I guess this fan will either be junked or I'll put it up on one of the local buy and sell pages and try to get my 15 bucks out of it from someone who just wants it for decoration. Okay, enough on that. Let's get back to the Admiral record player. Okay, this tone arm is tracking at about 4 grams. And this type of cartridge really wants to see about 5, 5 and a half grams. And I believe this is our adjustment screw right there that we have to adjust until we get the tracking pressure where it needs to be. Okay, we have it at 5 and a half grams, which seems to be about what these ceramic cartridges like the most. Now I'll demonstrate the other problem we have. Tone arm goes in too far. And the screw to adjust tone arm set down is on the at the rear of the tone arm on the left hand side. You'll see it when you raise the tone arm. Turning the screw counterclockwise moves the tone arm further in. Turning it clockwise causes his tone arm to land further out. And I think we've adjusted it and have our problem solved. Let's see. I don't know what that was. Okay, so we developed another prop. Uh, yeah, I forgot to unclip the tone arm from the rest. Let's see if it'll work now or did we destroy something. Uh, that's better. Okay, except for a little more cleanup and bolting everything back together, I'd say this record player is about ready to go. I think that 45 adapter is a little flaky. And that record is, has seen better days, as you can hear. Telegram for Belmont. But that's fine. I like to keep some down and dirty records out here just for testing stuff on. And that way, if there's a problem, we'll gouge a trashy record and not gouge one of my good records. And even though this needle is an LP needle, we'll try it with a 78 anyway. And like I said before, normally on these types of players, I like to use a cartridge with a flippable needle, but didn't have one of those on hand, and I made up my mind I wasn't going to spend any more money on this thing, and seeing as how most people will likely be playing only LPs and 45s, I just used what I had on hand. If now and then... And when I'm re-gluing record mats, you see what I use to uh, weight the mat down to the turntable until the glue dries. Okay, that ought to about do it. The 1965 Admiral record player. Ready to go. Thanks for watching and more to come later.